been doing this drag race stuff forever, and there has been more times that I have been over at the guy I'm going to race next round helping him get ready. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's the community. Everybody does the same thing. Now, you put your helmet on, and you go to the starting line, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you want to go for the juggler. Yeah. But up until that, you'll do anything you can so that you can have a side-by-side -side kind of race. Welcome to Mini Bike and Ain't Easy, a Go Power Sports podcast. This is episode four, and I am here with producer Zane, my main man Bernie on the ones and twos. Yo, yo. And today we have a special guest for you. We have Jeb Trione. So is Jeb short for Jebediah? It is not. Okay. It is not. Wait, what is it? Just, is just, it just Jeb? It's just Jeb. And no middle initial either. Just Jeb. What? <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. What, do you mind if I ask where that comes from? Um, it came from a um, <clears throat> movie in the early 50s, and when they rolled all the credits, my parents saw that name and decided that would be a good name for me. Nice. Yeah, I like it. Okay. I don't know if I've met another Jeb in my life before. I've only met one. One that's yeah. just, like, solid yeah, But Jeb. he only had one B. Oof, you're special. So, you, so got two. I, you had a beat. I'm twice as good because I have two beats. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So um, I need to learn a lot about you, but I need to know kind of where you started from and just how you would play into mini bike. And what I know from you is that you were a promoter of the Temple Harley Drags. But let's go back. I don't even know how old you are. We'll say let's go back 40, 50 years. We'll, we'll go back longer than that. We'll go back 60 plus years because I started mini biking when I was six and what? seven. Really? Yes. A Bonanza um, with a one and a half horse Briggs and Stratton motor on it. Nice. Okay. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> that was my first adventure into mini biking. And then it just grew from there. Went to dirt bikes um, and then bigger dirt bikes and then hurt myself on a dirt bike. So <clears throat> it was time to do something with four wheels. And, um, <laughs> Just been around cars and drag racing all of my life. My dad raced um, in the mid-60s, and I was at the drag strip with him, and it never left. Okay. Uh, just uh, as I got older, I got more hooked and more hooked, and when I was 15 and a half, I started running my own car, and um, we drag raced from then all the way up until... Um, about 15 years ago. No, no, actually, when we came to Texas, we, we've been here for 17 years. So when we came here, we quit drag racing. Excuse me, but let me back up. I was in the Harley business for the from the time we moved here until I retired in 2020. And uh, still always enthused in drag racing, went and spectate many drag races throughout the, the years, uh, but never was involved directly type of thing. And then... Um, we saw an opportunity that uh, the Temple Harley drags were, they were either going to go away or who knows what was going to happen to it. It, it was just the, the promoter was tired and, and the event was going downhill. We love drag racing. We love Harley Davidson's. And we said, you know what? Maybe we should get involved. And uh, a good friend of mine at that time was, he said, you know, if I'd love to help. So we got together, and two days later, my wife, my partner, and myself owned a drag race. Had no clue what we were getting into. No clue. We've promoted car shows. We've promoted, helped promote a lot of things over the years um, in the car world. But running a drag race, putting it together, putting together packages to get more people involved, and then realize, oh, my gosh, we got to grow this thing, and... Uh, it's been a good challenge, <laughs> but I have wonderful people that are behind us and now go powers with us. Another wonderful company that is, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So we've put on two races last year. We put on one race the year before, and this year we're expanding to three races, two in um, 
Temple, Texas at the Little River Dragway. And we're moving forward and creating a third one out in Silsby, Texas at Evadale Raceway. Um, so we've got all of Texas covered, well, the south, southern area of Texas covered with motorcycle drag racing. And again, it's just, it's amazing the people that are backing, um, that are partnering with us um, has been incredible. You know, we put on a race and they said, you guys did a great job. You need to do another one. So we did. And then pretty soon it's like, you need to do another one. And okay, that's enough. And, and all of our marketing partners, sponsors that are with us, every time we decide to do something, they're like, come on, we want to be with you. So it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's a learning experience, ongoing learning experience. But, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. The ability to make people happy doing what they love. And um, our passion has always been getting children involved, little guys. Um, so, and we did that in the car world, and we're doing that in the motorcycle world because if they start on a mini bike, eventually they're going to end up on a Harley. There's just no <laughs> doubt about it. You know, it's a stepping stone kind of deal, but it happens. You know, we're working hard, and now we have Go Power behind us to build this thing, um, and we're going to keep motorcycle drag racing alive in Texas. Nice. So, so walk me through an event. If I'm going to a Temple Harley Drag, is that like the name of the race? We have, we put on the Temple Harley Drags mm -hmm. in September, and then we have the Temple Race of Honor in May. Okay. So walk me through an event. It's a three-day event? It's a three-day event, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday is a uh, <clears throat> more of a giant test and tune kind of thing. So um, in our May race, we race mini bikes, we race metric bikes, and we race Harleys. Uh, in our September race, we race only Harleys and mini bikes, uh, no metric bikes. Mm. Friday is, um, like I said, a test and tune, get there, get yourself all set up and, and go and ready to go. Friday night, we run a bracket race. All the metric guys get together, put some money in a pool. All the Harley guys get together, put some money in a pool, and they use it as a test and tune, and it's a winner take all kind of thing. Mm. It's just a nice laid back kind of deal. Uh, Saturday, the event starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, we'll do time trials throughout the morning and early afternoon. Uh, the mini bikes, the metric bikes, and it's called a V-Twin Racing Association, which encompasses all Harleys, and if there's other V-Twins, they can run in there also. And there's eight different categories that they run in. So they will run time trials, and then we start eliminations for them on Saturday, and they run a complete race schedule from time trials to winning the event. So they run a complete race on Saturday, and we will do the same thing with the mini bikes. We'll run a complete race on Saturday, and then we'll turn right around and do it again on Sunday, right? Time trials are Sunday morning, races start at noon, <clears throat> and then eliminations throughout the day. We also run nitro burning Harley Davidsons. Those bikes run qualifying on Saturday and then eliminations on Sunday. So they run one event in two days because they have a lot of maintenance to do in between rounds and so on. So uh, it's just much easier to do that. How fast do those bikes go? Um, those will go uh, mid four seconds at about 170 in the eighth mile. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's flying. That's yeah. so fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And it's just, it, it's a, you can't, if you've never experienced nitromethane in a car or a motorcycle, I cannot explain it to you. I just can't. You have to stand on the starting line, which no other sport you're able to do. In drag racing, and especially at Little River, you can be on the starting line. You will be on the starting line, I guarantee you. You know, um, We walk up there, and, and that's just, that's the way our sport is. You know, So the pound of nitromethane, Coming out of a motorcycle or a car is not something that you can explain. You have to experience it. Mm. You know? So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. When was the first time that you raced a bike like that? Um, I personally have never raced a bike like that. Oh, okay. I don't, I have, I am building a vintage bike that is nitro burning, um, that it will run in the five second range at about 130 miles an hour. Uh, but 
that's still we're still in the process of that. And, okay, got it. Yeah. Are you jockeying that? Are you actually I, riding? I it? am not. No, okay. uh, my wife Denise will be riding it. Will and and if she can't, then my friend that I raced with for many many years out in California, um, he will fly out and ride it. Okay. So he comes to our races anyway and helps us. So. I, I'm highly jealous, Denise. That <laughs> that sounds like a once in a time experience to where your soul just leaves your body. <laughs> she drove our race cars for uh, many years, um, so oh. yeah, this is going to be a new experience on two wheels for her. So gotcha. We're excited. Okay. Um, did you guys meet while racing, or did you guys meet? How did you guys meet? Junior high. Whoa! Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we've been together for however long forever is. That's yeah. us. <laughs> That's special. My wife and I met in high school, and we are still sweethearts and married and a bunch of kids and whatnot. And so good job good job to you. Well, thank it, you. It's nice to thank see that, that, that there is longevity there. I also am married to my high school sweetheart. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. the name of the podcast now. And, yeah, and the, high school sweetheart. <laughs> and the thing of it, 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 you know, we are very fortunate that um, – we still like each other too. Yes. You know, so yeah. that, that's pretty cool. You know. So then, okay, so you guys didn't meet doing this. So no. she's been with me ever since I was doing it though. Okay. You know? And so. so, and you guys share that as a, as a, not just a hobby, it sounds like. It sounds like it really is a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we like it or not, especially now. <laughs> especially now. Yeah. Yes, it is. It, it has been a lifestyle. And our, our kids grew up around it, and our grandkids are growing up around it, so it, it's very, very special. That's nice. awesome. So you're also going around. You're going to be building a drag mini bike that we're going to be helping you out with. You're going to build up this drag mini bike, which is going to resemble this vintage bike that you're making at the same time. That's correct. We're going to try to mirror them um, as, as close as we can. Our, our bike is called the Punisher, hmm. and now we're going to have a little Punisher. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. And um, so this started out um, last year. We started talking about doing a mini bike because we want to promote the class. So we go around and do bike nights, car shows, bike shows, things like that. And, you know, we try to promote our race. You need something to show people that this is what we do, not just a tent and a pamphlet. So we decided that um, we're going to build a mini bike so that we can promote the mini bike class, but also the drag race, and it's just easy to, to move around. And then we got the opportunity to buy a vintage motorcycle, uh, drag bike, and we are doing both of them, resurrecting the vintage motorcycle, um, as we said. And then the mini bike aspect of things kind of grew out of, yeah, we're going to do this to all of our races that we do, um, we try to give back to a foundation of some sort, mm. right? So last year, we were able to give back to um, several military um, groups. And uh, our September race, we gave back to Wheelchairs for Warriors. Um, and we had so much fun. We actually drag raced wheelchairs. Nice. W Wait. Yes. yes. Like threw engines on them? And no, I no, wish. no. Like you're you're in a wheelchair and you are moving the wheelchair. Wow. You have a Christmas tree that comes down at the racetrack, and you go when the light is green, and you go out sixty feet, okay. because that's the first incremental timing that happens at the races. Just a ten minute race going to the quarter mile. So <laughs> yeah, we raced wheelchairs last year, and we had wheelchairs for warriors at our race. Um, we had several uh, young men in their chairs that are confined, and we got to we got to do a life changing experience for them. You know, they got to drag race their wheelchair. It was amazing. And then there was side bets going on, and people just there was hundreds of people all over the starting line, and we just had such a great time. It was unbelievable. So. Then we decided if we're going to do this mini bike thing, what we're going to do is we're going to create a raffle. We're going to go to the different events. We're going to sell raffle tickets to the mini bike provided by GoPower. And all the proceeds to the mini bike that's given away at our race in September will go to Wheelchairs for Warriors. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, it's a good feeling. Do you have a military background? I do not. Our partner in the race does. Okay. Yeah, gotcha, very gotcha. much so. 
Cool. Um, have a lot of close friends that um, were in the military, but I was not. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, no, it's good to throw good to throw some support that way. Absolutely, it's it's a it's a great feeling, and I think a lot of it has to do with the appreciation that is shown by the people and the foundations that we have given to. It's amazing, nice. you know. Uh, the the reciprocation of thank you is just incredible. Yeah, awesome. What do you see as a way of creating more access into racing? Because, like, for younger kids, it can be getting involved in either go-karts or mini bikes. Um, but how do you see opening up accessibility to racing to people who are, like, confined to a wheelchair or have uh, a different different ability level? It's, I, I think the biggest thing is awareness. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't know what drag racing is. A lot of people don't know what motorsports is. And all the... Uh, opportunities that motorsports provides for children, you know? Um, so it's, it's awareness. It's getting the word out, going to schools, talking to people, talking, getting <clears throat> industrial arts people to try to get them involved, mm. to promote within, you know? If you can get a parent to bring a child to a drag race or an oval track race or some sort of motorsports, they're going to get enthused. They're going to go home and play with their little cars. They're going to go home and find something on TV. You guys do mini bikes. It's addicting. Yeah. I'm sorry. You can't you can't say that motorsports or motorcycles or whatever, if you get to do it, you don't want to stop. Very right? true. Very true. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it so it's awareness. It's getting them hooked. Okay. You know. Um. And you know that's that's our job now. <laughs> is is we we got to get people to come to our races. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Let's hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Hey, guys, it's Paul from Better Call Paul. Today I'm here to talk about the pros and cons of the Tillotson Racing Road. So we'll start off with the cons. None. We're done. Let's go to the pros. Pros of this oil, it does have both steps of the oil that you need, the break-in and the regular. If you're starting with a brand new engine from a fresh build, use the break-in oil. If you use the break-in oil, I have seen much better ring seal with using this before going straight into the regular oil. This oil has excellent protection against wear, foam, and corrosion. It isn't a multi-viscosity oil, but it does have low temperature properties. So when it is cold outside, you're not gonna get that dry start. It has good thermal and oxidation anti-wear properties. The biggest issue with these engines is, since this is a tappet style engine, it has to have that extra anti-wear additives in it. Otherwise, metal to metal contact happens and the motors wear out really fast. This oil is 100% synthetic and it's designed, like I said, 100% for these engines. Keep them cool, run at higher RPM. Most of my racing guys are running this oil and all of last year, all my motors that ran just this, zero issues. All right, guys, well, that's about it. This is the uh, Tillotson Racing Oil Collection. You can get this on our website, gopowersport.com. And don't forget, you better call Paul. And we're back. All right, Jeb. So talk to us a little bit about family, how it can be attained through mini bike, using your hands in the garage. Like, what are your feelings on that? Little guys, um, they don't need to be sitting on a computer or a game or whatever. There's other things that, you know, we didn't have those years ago. So we went outside and, you know, grabbed a screwdriver and put it in something we weren't supposed to and <laughs> some, you know, things like that. But you learn. Right. And and today's young people, they're not they don't do that as much. So we need to try to get people to use their hands. You know, um, education is not always in a book, in a computer, whatever the case may be. It's practical knowledge of, you know, working on something and just hanging around people that enjoy and have a passion for something. They're going to learn. They're going to learn about how to talk to somebody, what to say, what not to say. They see some somebody taking something apart, and they're looking over their shoulder, and they're like, hey, what's that? 
and that person says, hey, you know, this is what it is, this is why it's inside an engine, you know, whether it be in a <clears throat> mini bike engine or a, a race car or, or uh, whatever the case may be, you know, there's so many opportunities to learn from that, you know, and, and that extends as they get older. Again, the passion begins, you know, type of thing. Um, I want to build something. I want to take something apart. Uh, I can't put it back together, but I'm going to learn to put it back together, you know, and, and it, that gets fueled, you know, and then pretty soon they learn more about racing or whatever the case may be. But it's not just sitting in front of the TV. It's not sitting playing a box. It's it's out using your hands. Mm. You know? Do you get this opportunity with any grandchildren? We do. We have uh, two of our grandchildren are at all of our races. Um, the others are older and they're into football. So the dates are always conflicting, but they will be there also. Nice. Our kids grew up at the racetrack. They, uh, they always enjoyed it. Um, they, they love the sport, but they were never able to do it. I think now as they're older, they want to even more, <laughs> you know, uh, but they have families now. Yeah. So it's difficult to do that. We have so many friends over the years that their families, I mean, we all, you may not only see them twice a year, but you see the family at the racetrack, you know, mm. um, and the environment that we have at our races are, is a very family oriented kind of thing. You know, we have stuff for kids to do. Um, we have a dunk tank, you know, so the little guys can, can go play around over there. Again, the mini bike races, you know, that if you're a uh, eight to 12, 13 year old young man or young lady, and um, they see a mini bike going down the racetrack, they're like, hey, wait a minute, I could do that, mm. right? And pretty soon, it, it starts the ball rolling. And, and we want to, again, we just, we want to make, a, we have to create awareness. It's, it, it just, that, that's what, what motorsports and uh, getting young people involved is creating awareness. Now, gotcha. at your races, are, are kids allowed to race in the mini bike drags? Or what's the age that they can start racing? We had a four-year-old last year. <laughs> okay. Go down the race. What? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did he win it all? <laughs> um, he he was by himself. His dad runs, a, or his mom and dad run Top Fuel Harleys. Mm. So he's around it every day of his life. And, um, I mean, he's, he's a very mature four-year-old. And his dad came and said, hey, you know, I want, can my son go down the racetrack? And we're like, Absolutely. If you feel comfortable with it, we're comfortable with it, you know? Nice. So he was out there all by himself, you know, and he got to go down a racetrack. Traditionally, they're eight years old, seven, eight years old. That's when they pretty much start. Gotcha. Know? And then, of course, you know, the the young person is, it starts there, and now we have 50-year-olds on mini bikes, <laughs> right, or, yes. or older, yeah. right, kind of thing, um, that are out there racing. So it's cool because, you know, grandpa can race his grandson, and there's a category for him, yeah. you know, kind of thing that, that becomes very affordable. That's actually something that, um, that one of our, our previous guests talked about was that when it comes to drag racing, mini bike drag racing is incredibly easy to get into in terms of the cost, the, you know, the, the amount that you have to put in to initially get into it. Absolutely. You know, and, and again, that's part of us trying to grow the sport. Mm -hmm. If we can get people involved at and be in a, at an affordable level, it, there isn't anything more for you can't get into any kind of motorsport for what you can buy a mini bike for and go out and play around. There, there is nothing. I mean, it costs more to, to go to a movie sometimes with a, you, you know, you take a, a big family to a movie, you, you could spend, you could spend enough to buy a mini bike, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Where else can you do that and go have fun? <clears throat> the affordability aspect. And, and again, what happens is you get hooked, you know, you, you, you start out with a $350 mini bike and the next thing you know, you're at a $4,000 motorcycle. And then the next thing you know, you're like, you know. You're at a $50,000 Nitro Harley kind of motorcycle, you know? I mean, it just, it grows. It just grows. Yeah, and it sounds like you have a lot of time to think about that as time slowly stretches out as you're going 180 miles per hour down the drag strip. <laughs> That's so much, not so much the thought there. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it just, the, the, the 10 year old that's on the mini bike, he's looking across the pit and being able to walk over and talk to the guy who just went 
four and a half seconds at 160 miles an hour, he can walk over, stand next to him and talk to him and be part of kind of thing, right? That's the wonderful part of our sport. You can't do that in at a baseball game. You can't do that at, at, at NASCAR. You know, mm. you can't get close. Whereas our sport, you can come up, you can get his autograph, and you can you can be his pal in two minutes. You know, so that fuels the fire. You know what? I'm gonna work. I'm gonna get a job. I'm gonna work for my neighbor. I'm gonna do whatever. I gotta make some more money to get my mini bike faster. And then that amplifies up to I want to grow. I, I I want a bigger mini bike. I want a motorcycle. I want whatever. You know. So instead of hanging out, maybe they're out doing something, you know, making money um, so that they can feed their passion. Have you seen recently, or, or, I mean, obviously uh, in the past it probably wasn't prevalent, but do you see more young women, young girls getting involved oh, in the sport? Absolutely. Awesome. Like okay. we drag raced when my wife drove our car in the eighties, there would be maybe two females at a race that would have three or 400 people. Now you see, you know, 25% can be females at times. And in the motorcycle world is really interesting. And the small engine world is really interesting. Um, junior dragster, NHRA has done a great job of putting together junior dragster programs. Um, <clears throat> these children are eight to 15 years old. Um, and, the <clears throat> and, uh, like I said, they've, they've done a wonderful job of promoting it and growing it over the years. And the girls involved in that, I mean, some races, there's, you know, if there's 20 little cars there, half of them are, are piloted by females. It's wonderful, you know. And to see there's a lot of race teams out there, you see young girls in there getting dirty. They're not driving. They're helping their family. They're helping their friend or whatever. It's awesome. Awesome to see. It really is. That's great to, yeah. Yeah, to see yeah. that that's like, it's opening up doors that and, usually young women haven't had yes. to get their hands dirty. And it's accepted. Yeah. You know, it's it's okay in the male's eyes and the other female's eyes, you know? So, yes. yeah, yeah. It's really, really nice. That's awesome. It, it's, like you said, it's about creating accessibility. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You know? So you were talking about awareness. If someone uh, saw, saw this on the podcast, where can they go to find more information on these races or on your Facebook or is there an Instagram as well? Sure. It's the Temple Harley Drags on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we do have a website uh, that is not quite finished yet. It's up and going, and it'll be the Temple Harley Drags. Um, and uh, there's information on our races. There will be information on other people's races. The place to go if you want to see some quality motorcycle drag racing is cycledrag.com. Mm -hmm. um, he does an amazing job. and He's got um, many, many followers on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, but the quality of his product is none better out there. Um, we have him come to our races. That's all he does is go to motorcycle drag races and cover them, and then he puts together, you know, 20-minute videos or however long they are, and he just does a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. He really, really does. But if you want to see what motorcycle drag racing is all about, cycledrag.com is awesome. Okay, you know? nice. Also, too, um, you can go to, there's many Harley drag race sites out there that are some different associations that run around the country. There's some good information there. Um, NHRA has some great information on motorcycle drag racing also um, that encompasses some kids and how to get involved in the like the junior dragster program you know so yeah. So for Temple Harley Drags so was it last year you, you guys started? No in um, 20. In 20? Yes. And how many races were there the first year? One. Okay so last year how many races were there? Two. And then this year were no, three? Three. Yes. Is there a progression? Do you see like, yeah, I want to, my goal is 20 in a no, year? Okay. No, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, you know, we, d we do this because we enjoy it and we want to support the sport. And if we make a little bit of money, that's great too. Um, but any more than, 
what we're doing now, it, it's it's a lot. So I'm going to say at this point, um, so that I don't get shot by somebody, um, <laughs> that uh, our three races are, are, are is going to be plenty for okay. for now. You know, um, but we will work with anybody that wants to put on a motorcycle drag race um, or a mini bike only drag race. Anything we can do to promote the sport of drag racing and promote, um, you know, uh, introduce it, mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. going to be available to whoever wants to do that. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. So this is obviously you're doing these in Texas. Yes. Do you see the sport? Are there organizations around the country doing the same thing or is it really kind of only in Texas? No, there's organizations around the country that are doing it, but um, they're kind of divided, let's call it. There's okay. the mini bike people. And they kind of go do their own thing. And then there's the metric bike people, and they kind of do their own thing. And there's the Harley people, and they kind of do their own thing. We are trying to meld everybody together. It's easier to grow in numbers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so far, we've been relatively successful in, in getting people together and, and, and doing that. There's still the all Harley drag racing associations, which are wonderful, and they do a great job. In our part of the country, there isn't enough to do that. So um, it's better to have 120 motorcycles at a race than 60 motorcycles at a race. Yeah. You know, it's better to have 120 mini bikes, Harleys, metric bikes at a race. Mm -hmm. It's great for the spectator. It's more awareness. They have a better time than going out and watching 35 mini bikes. Yeah, you, you know, know kind change of it up a little bit. Yeah. You yeah, make the tent yeah. bigger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I like that. You know? Um, yeah, and that just, again, we go back to that fuel and that fire again, you know, kind of thing. So we, every November, we throw a GPS 180, which is our, it's our endurance race. It's off-road. It's 180 minutes, cover as much ground as possible. We are looking to add the GPS 660, which is out of yellow belly if we were to you have any words of wisdom for people who like myself who are thinking about starting a having a race weekend out there for the race itself you mean or i'd say uh, that and sponsorship like any i guess any tidbits like because i've never done this before i've only done the gps 180 i've never dealt with a, a drag uh -huh. drag strip sure. and drag drag racing sure let me know what uh any info you got well I can tell you this, when, when you're, when you come to our race, we're hanging out, okay. <laughs> right? And whether you like it or not, you're going to learn, mm. right? It's just like we talked about with the little guys, right? If you're hanging out, you're going to learn, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I, I, it's hard to give you a, a, a pointer on something on what to do. Cause there's so many different aspects of mm -hmm. it. The biggest thing is, um, you know, the organization part of it making sure that everybody is clear and about what's going on before it starts mm -hmm. so that you eliminate as many questions as you can before it starts, okay. you know? Um, and, and we can go over all of those things as you're going to have a question that I, I can answer hopefully. Yeah. Right. I can't tell you something because I don't know what you want to know when it comes to stuff like something like that. So but I'm out at yellow belly, when you do that, 660 deal you know uh, we will be we'll we'll be part of it because we have a little marriage that's going to go on here okay you know? so you would help me out so i don't have to <laughs> oh ab absolutely my brain finding no everything. absolutely okay. you know and and that's as i said anything that we can do to grow the sport get more people involved um and, and make it make a better time out of it mm -hmm. um we're, we're here for you you know do just you like you have been for us well we appreciate you know? that do you think it would be ridiculous that if we could get 40 or 50 mini bike bikers out there. Does that seem like there are enough mini bike drag racers out there? I think so. Absolutely. Um, because so <clears throat> at our race at temple, we do, um, the mini bike drag race. So we thought, um, there's a area at the racetrack that is just kind of an open area. It's a pit area to park, but it's not used. It's, mm -hmm. it just, we don't have enough vehicles to go out there. Right. So um, we said the first year, why don't we let the mini bike guys go out and play around out in the in the field in the field, <laughs> right? 
So we made up a little racetrack out there. Okay, nice. And, and let the mini bike guys go out and have a good time. And we actually had more guys show up Saturday night to run on the dirt track than we did drag race, right? They came in at the end of the day. They went out. They had a good time. There was 12, 14 of them out there nice. playing around. Um, and then the following at, at our May race, we did the same thing, and the same thing happened. We had more people. We actually had as many or more that went out and played around on the out in the field than they did at the drag strip. Hmm. So, to answer your question, the potential is there. Yeah. We just got to get them from the field to the pavement, yeah. right? <laughs> Nothing's yeah. really changed here. You're still going to go out them. and play around, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, but yes, absolutely. There, I think you could get more than that. I wonder if just the people who are already racing the Metrics and the Harleys, I wonder if those people would also just throw a mini bike in the back of their trailer already, as well. Already happening. Okay, so they <laughs> already Already happening. They're just racing in more than just one class as, now. As a, as a matter of fact, um, as you know, we have ordered another mini bike. Yeah. We've sold another mini bike, um, a drag mini bike for you. And the person that is buying that is exactly that person. Nice. They already run a drag race motorcycle um, and they're going mini bike racing. Nice. So yeah, yeah. And it's gonna carry on. That has already fueled a fire, right? Because they're like, hey, he's gonna go mini bike racing? Well, I'm gonna go kick his you know what, <laughs> right? I, I can do it out on the racetrack with the big bike. Yeah. I can do it on the mini bike. Yeah, I'm after it, right? So yeah, yeah there, there's already, um, it's already happening. Gotcha. Okay. All right, we are going to take a quick break and uh, hear a few words from our sponsors. So I'm in the John, okay? That didn't sound right. <laughs> so, so I'm in the bathroom and I hear all these, you know, engines racing. I start smelling tire rubber. And the next thing I know, I hear all kinds of commotions and stuff. And I'm like, what's going on? And I didn't even know what happened even when I come out. I didn't learn until I got to the hotel. I didn't see it. I honestly did not. I just saw everyone's reaction. And everyone started looking at me. Did you see that? Hey, Zeus. I have a story to tell you. I go for it, though. All right. So we took bets on when or who would knock it over. On the evening ride last night, somebody did a burnout and launched their mini bike into the giveaway. Bike. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. So it was already back up on the stand. Everybody, right everybody hit was gone. <laughs> was that, people people, people yeah. must have scattered when it when it happened. Frightened. I didn't even see it. And Paul and I like this story better. Paul and Rick were like the most. I thought Rick was gonna kill someone. And uh, yeah, it's. Unfortunate, but you know, accidents happen. And this kid starts doing the burnout. No, no. And it's like, okay, cool. And he keeps doing it, and it starts smelling, and who smokes on everywhere. Like, I used to like Tim and Dave just like getting annoyed. They were they were hanging out all weekend. We're with us, like with us. Yeah, Evan. Evan saw them last year at Pay, and the kid like made his own mini bike out of like shipping crates, and yeah. Possibly. 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 And we're back. So, Jeb, what do you see as the future of drag racing? And what do you see as any kind of, what do you see as both positive influences on it and negative influences on it moving forward? 
positive influences is there's um, the younger crowd that we are trying to get to. Again, we've got to we've got to get to the younger people. We've got to keep them enthused and get them enthused. And it's out there. There's a a, a big influx of high school programs um, for the for the kids that the racetracks put on specific nights actually that's a high school only kind of night so there's the intimidation factor is not there you know and they can go out and just do their own thing you know it it's out there it's just got to be made aware um and and there's there's growth potential um in the car world in the motorcycle world absolutely there's growth potential part of what we run into is availability of racetracks over the years the urban sprawl has eaten up all many, many, many racetracks. I mean, in in our in Texas alone, uh, just up in this area, I know that um, there's probably been four or five of them in the last ten years that have gone away mm. um, because there's housing developments or industrial developments or whatever. The land gets too valuable, mm-hmm. and the return on investment is not great enough for the track owners. So the guy comes in and says, "I want to build a building there. I'll give you this much money." And he's like, "Yeah, I, I can't." I can't make that money putting on drag races, so yeah. off it goes. And we see that way too often. You know, we're seeing it more and more. Fortunately, Texas is big, and there are still some outlying areas. But you know, we lost the biggest racetrack in Texas um, this year is our last year in Baytown. You know, we had um, 20 years of national event quality racing going on there, and weekly programs going on. I mean. Houston's got four million people in it, and now it's got one one eighth mile racetrack left, mm. and it's getting threatened because there's housing all over it. You know, that's that's a concern. That's mm. a, a real concern. You know, what do you what do you see as a way of mitigating that? Do you think we need to have more public investment in spaces for people to race? Absolutely. The problem with that is is the cost of. It's just too great for the return, mm. you know. I mean, there's new tra- there's some new tracks that have popped up. You guys have one up here at in Ferris. Um, mm-hmm. Probably the best eighth-mile facility in the United States today. Mm-hmm. It's one of the newest ones, you know. So those guys went out and did however they did, and, and they put together a, a quality facility. You're just not seeing enough of it. What spot? Uh, you know? What spot is that? It's called XRP Raceway in Ferris. Okay, Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, very, very nice facility. Preserving what's out there um, is very, very important. And, you know, creating some new um, venues would be wonderful. And they all have to be a multi-use kind of thing. They really do. For the guys to make any money, they've got to be some sort of multi-use kind Mm, of thing. And, And the dilemma you run into is you need to be far enough away so that the urban sprawl doesn't get you. But if you're too far away so it doesn't get you people won't travel yeah you know so it's this double-edged sword and and it's been that way forever you know yeah Uh, doesn't matter what part of the country you're in with the rise in electric vehicles do you think that we're going to see possibly indoor drag um they've already started doing some stuff um but they're doing it outdoor they're actually you know there's certain events that the electric people are putting on. And I won't say I hate to say it because it's today, it's technology, it's here, we have to deal with it whether we like it or not. We'll probably have an electric category at our races. Oh, Harley Davidson is building electric motorcycles. All the manufacturers have electric motorcycles. Eventually, we're gonna have to do that, yeah. you know? And again, if that's what we have to do to expand our participant base, that's what we'll do, cool. you know? If if we see that the young people are only going to the EV stuff, you know what? We better do that. You yeah. know, we have to change our mindset. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's and it's in a big way. I, I've been to several uh, large automotive shows, and the amount of electric vehicle product that's out there, and the advancement in technology that's out there that's being focused on EV product is incredible. Mm. Absolutely incredible. And those and, things go fast. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The, just ridiculous horsepower. Ridiculous horsepower. You know? Nice. So for you guys, we have three races coming up. Can So the, the date of the first one, it was May 19th? 19th, 20th, and 21st at Little River Dragway in Temple, Texas. Okay. 
Um, we'll have mini bikes, we'll have the metric bikes, and we'll have the top fuel bikes there. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, then after that May date, what's your next race? Then we have June 9th and 10th in Evadale Raceway, uh, at Evadale Raceway in Silsby, Texas. And we will have the same uh, lineup. We'll have mini bikes, we'll have the metric bikes, we'll have the V-Twin uh, Racing Association, which will be at Temple also, and we'll have the top fuel bikes. That is called Nitro at Night. That race will be run uh, late in the afternoon into the evening, both days. We want, uh, again, I can't explain nitromethane in motorcycles or cars. When you see it, you smell it, you feel it. When you see it at night and smell it and feel it, another totally different experience. We're going to do a Friday night and a Saturday night um, race there. Okay, and roughly from the Go Power Sports shop, how many hours would it take to drive down? From here to Evadale is probably maybe 260, 270 miles okay. right in that area. Okay. And I think Temple is not but about 75 miles. Okay. So Because we had conflicting dates for the first race, but Correct. the second one... We want to be out there. We want to man the booth. We want to hang out. And it, so we will be camping Friday and Saturday night? Yes. And all of our races, um, we do free camping. Um, we do free showers. Uh, we do free parking. And it's 50 bucks for the weekend per okay. person. So it is a great value. Mm. You know, uh, kids under six are free. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can't go anywhere and, and, and do anything for the cost that of, of our weekends. So say I have a mini bike and I want to race. I show up, I pay the 50 bucks that gets me in. Yes. And then is there an extra fee to race? Yes. You'll, you'll pay for a tech card okay. and the mini bike tech card is $25. Okay. Um, and that money all goes back to you in a purse. Okay. And then we, as, um, promoters, we add to that purse. Mm. So, and we'll do that at all three races. So the, the more mini bikes we get, the more you race for. Okay. Um, we have three categories of mini bikes um, that we race. Uh, the outlaw mini bike is whatever you think you want to do to it and bring, you can do it. Whoever's got the biggest, baddest product wins. You come back, you keep going. Okay. Right. The other two categories are a bracket race. So you have what's called a dial in. You say, I'm going to go this fast. This guy says, I'm going to go this fast. The Christmas tree comes down at a staggered rate so that this guy gets a head start mm. because he's got a little bit of a slower mini bike. And what you do is you, when you get to the end, theoretically, if you both are close to your, what's called the dial in, you should get there at the same time, mm. right? So it equals the playing field. That category has to be pull start. And um, it can't, one of them, you can have a wheelie bar on it. The other one, you can't have a wheelie bar on it. Okay. So. Now, do these mini bikes go through any kind of, do they go through tech just to make sure brakes work? We and, do. We, okay. we, have a, we have a tech inspection, make sure that there's tread on the tires, make sure that there's a proper safety gear, um, which is not a whole bunch, but you got to have boots, you got to have long pants, you got to have a, a certified helmet, you got to have gloves and a leather jacket. Okay. Right? Mm. Or a race jacket of some sort. Most of the guys, the mini bike guys use a dirt bike kind of jacket or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yes, it, it, it is, we, we need to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So whenever you pay the $25 for the tech card, is that for good for Friday and Saturday or each day it starts over? So if we decide to do one race one day and one race another day, you'll pay $25 one day and $25 another day. Okay. If, if we have 10 mini bikes show up, let's say, right? I'll go and I'll say, Hey, do you guys want to run a race a day or do you want to run a race a weekend? It's up to you guys. Okay. We, we put it back on you. If you, if you want to you do two races, that's great. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. Now, are there any other event-type things going on other than the race, races out here? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so we have live music on Saturday night um, at our races. We've got vendor booths set up, and there's face painting, and there's dunk tanks, and there's always something for somebody to do. Okay. You know, type of thing. It, yeah. Do, do you have like, uh, do, do people do like swap meet t style stuff or um, not really? No. Um, that is something that we will incorporate eventually gotcha. uh, into our races. Um, so 
<clears throat> the um, our May race uh, coming up uh, at Little River, we are going to have a performance bike and chopper show. We've never done that before. So um, that'll be interesting, and that'll be a lot of fun. It, it's going to bring some more people that are not drag race oriented people they're motorcycle people and they're going to come and they're going to show their bikes good type of thing um so that'll be fun and but we will eventually we will do a swap meet yes okay yeah we will definitely do that and then your third date our third date is back at um temple at little river dragway um september 23 24 25 i believe that will be a all harley and mini bike only there will be no metric bikes at, at that one. Okay. So we have our V-Twin Racing Association coming, and the Top Fuel Harleys coming, and the mini bikes will be there. All of our races feature mini bikes. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. What is your advice to someone who is going to be going out and racing in one of the races for the first time? Ask questions. Go to the people who are, have been doing this for a while. No matter how silly you think the question is, They've been asked it before, and I guarantee you that they will never look down upon you for asking a question because everybody there started where you're at, right? And they don't want that stigma about them that, oh, you know, uh, I'm too good to answer that question or whatever. It doesn't happen. That's the drag race community. It just doesn't happen, you know? So, yeah, ask questions. If you think it's silly, Ask it again, you know, uh, really, because you're going to learn, you know, and everybody is very, very willing to share their experiences, both positive and negative. Have a good idea about your mini bike. Know your mini bike. Know the, this part's weak, this part's good, um, and don't try to, don't try to be something that you're not. You don't have to be biggest baddest guy there the first time out yeah. you know go have fun mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing go have a good time let this be a good time nice i think your advice was also the same as flacco who who does the drag race and he also vouches for the community just actually looking after each other you know they're competitive on the track but once they get off they're there to help each other absolutely out. you know i mean we've been doing this drag race stuff forever and there has been more times that I have been over at the guy I'm going to race next round, helping him get ready. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's the community. Everybody does the same thing. Now, you put your helmet on and you go to the starting line, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you want to go for the juggler. Yeah. But up until that, you'll do anything you can so that you can have a side-by-side -side kind of race. Nice. You know? All right. So... Everyone can then find more about these races at Temple Drags. Temple Harley Drags. Temple Facebook, Harley Drags. Instagram, okay. um, and templeharleydrags.com. Okay, perfect. So, Jeb, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Man, thanks for having me. This is awesome. No, we, you're a wealth of knowledge. It's just great that you're that we're sponsoring up together. We're so excited for this year, uh, and really, good luck this, with everything you do. We're this definitely going to bring you back. This, like, is, <laughs> this is so, it's so much fun, and... Uh, to be involved with you guys are so enthused uh, about it and bringing the mini bike out and getting like the wheelchairs for warriors deal going. Um, just, y you can't, you can't understand how special that is to so many people, you know, nice. and you'll see it when we, when you guys come to the racetrack, you know, cool. well, we appreciate it. And, uh, we are signing out. So I just want to tell you guys to ride on. Thanks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>